Greetings to everyone. Welcome back again to my channel. Today we'll continue to discuss techniques of answering biology paper 3 and this time we'll look at another experiment which is experiment 9.5 in your textbook on vitamin C. Determining the concentration of vitamin C in different fruit juices. So we are going to discuss a question based on this experiment and discuss the techniques of answering the question in order for you to score uh, high marks for your biology paper 3. All right. So practice makes perfect and the more questions that you try on biology paper 3, the better you will get at it, Okay, at the techniques of answering. So let's continue to discuss techniques of answering biology paper 3 for the practical exam. In this video, we'll continue to master the science process cues as stated below here. Observing, measuring, using numbers, inferring, hypothesizing, all right, and so forth. There are 12 skills here in order to score for biology paper 3, right? Then after that, you can apply the same techniques and skills to all other paper 3 questions. Let us look at the sample practical question for the vitamin C experiment. Total score is 15 marks, and we use the first 5 minutes to check our apparatus and materials and plan the experiment. Let's go through this list. Number 1, guava fruit. 1 guava fruit. Number 2, 1 mango fruit. Now, instead of guava, you may be given orange and orange fruit, right? Which will be easier for you to extract the juice by just squeezing the, the orange. Huh? Okay, then number 3. 0.1% ascorbic acid solution, maybe about 50 to 100 ml of this solution in a beaker. And then number four, another beaker containing 1% DCPIP solution. Number five, a knife. Number six, three 5 ml syringes with needles. So check to make sure that your apparatus are functional. For example, make sure that the plunger can move smoothly in and out of the syringe. Right? Number seven, a 1 ml syringe with needle. It's not shown here. So 1 ml syringe will be used to draw up the, the 1 ml of DCPIP solution to be put in the specimen tube for the experiment. All right? Then number eight, 300 ml beakers. These beakers are, you, are for you to uh, contain, uh, for you to fill up with uh, fruit juice. For example, one beaker for guava juice one beaker for mango juice okay and then maybe one beaker for you to throw away all the bits and pieces of fruit uh, put it inside first all right so um, number nine specimen tubes there are four all right this is where you will put in the dcpip solution and then carry out the experiment to decolorize the dcpip solution with the fruit juices right then number 10 a sieve here and cheesecloth. These two are to strain the fruit juice to get rid of the big particles. For example, if you want to extract juice from guava, how do you do it? Firstly, you have to cut out the outer, take out the outer flesh. You don't want the seeds, right? So cut the outer flesh into thin strips or pieces. Cut it finely. And you can also put it into the mortar and then grind it with the pestle uh, to make sure that the fruit is crushed and the tissues are broken up, all right, so that the juice can be easily extracted. All right, don't pound too hard, huh? because that will affect the vitamin C content. Then lastly, we have, uh, now for cheesecloth, uh, you can put the fruit on the cheesecloth and then uh, close it up and then squeeze out the juice, huh? especially the, uh, even the mango juice or the guava juice. But don't mix up the two juices. Don't use the same cloth for the two juices okay use that separate uh, cheesecloth then lastly white towel is for you to cut the fruits okay and then uh, filter paper or tissue paper to wipe the fruits dry and to wipe other items right so after checking your apparatus and materials right you start the answering the question and carrying out the practical 
all right, the experiment. So this sample practical question is 15 marks, all right, in total, and the time is 40 minutes. So you have to time yourself and look at the watch, eh, what time you should stop. Uh, you have to um, note that, okay, what time, by what time you should finish the experiment and answer all the questions. Right, let's look at the question. You are required to carry out an experiment to determine the concentration of vitamin C in guava and mango juice by using DCPIP solution which is dichlorophenol indophenol. Now, using the apparatus and materials provided, plan your experiment. The experimental procedure should include the following steps. Methods to handle the three variables, precautions to be taken, and other steps. Four marks, right? So the first thing you do is, as can be seen here, underline the objective of the experiment. All right, it begins with the words carry out an experiment to something, uh, to determine, to study, to compare, and so forth. Uh? So from the aim of this experiment, this is called the aim or objective of the experiment, you can find or determine the MV and the RV, right? So what is the MV here? And what is the RV? Can you tell me the MV? Right, the MV is the, are the types of fruit juices, right? So whether it's guava or mango juice. And your RV is the, Right, concentration of vitamin C, right, in the fruit juices, right? Okay, so now you have determined your MV and RV, you can start planning the procedure based on the apparatus and materials that are given to you, okay? So, in this procedure, you must mention how you handle the MV, manipulated variable, the RV or responding variable and CV or FV, yeah, the constant or fixed variable. Okay, then think about the precautions to be taken and other steps. So pause the video a while and try to write out your experiment. Okay, the procedure, which should be written in the blank spaces below. Then we'll look at the answer. Now let's discuss the procedure for determining the concentration of vitamin C in the fruit juices. So there are two stages or two parts in this experiment. The first part is when we use ascorbic acid solution to decolorize the DCPIP solution. And after that, we determine the volume of ascorbic acid solution used to decolorize the DCPIP solution, which is our X value. Uh, that's my term for it, X value. And uh, X according to this word, ascorbic uh, X value, XML. And then the second part is when we use the guava fruit, the juice of the guava, or the juice of the mango, okay, to decolorize the DCPIP solution. And then we determine the volume of the guava juice or mango juice used to decolorize one ml of the DCPIP solution. And that's our Y value. Okay, then concentration of vitamin C in milligrams per ml will be X over Y, as we will discuss later. So let's look at the first part of the experiment when we use ascorbic acid solution to decolorize the DCPIP, right? So uh, by using a syringe, one ml of 1% DCPIP solution is measured uh, and then placed into this specimen tube. Okay, and then using a 5 ml syringe, you draw up 5 ml of the 0.1% ascorbic acid solution in your syringe. All right, and there's a dark mark there that will uh, tell you where until where you have drawn the solution. Uh, so this is at 5 ml, that's the initial reading. So the DCPIP solution is in the specimen tube. Okay, now next the syringe needle tip, uh, this one is inserted into the DCPIP solution in the specimen tube and the ascorbic acid here is added drop by drop into the DCPIP solution until the blue DCPIP solution is decolorized. Okay, so vitamin C has reduced the DCPIP solution and the DCPIP solution, DCPIP solution is decolorized. Then uh, the volume of 0.1% ascorbic acid here that was used to decolorize the DCPIP solution is recorded. So you have to take the initial reading of the syringe uh, minus the final reading on the syringe. I have to read this way up. Okay, like this one is at about 4, 4 ml. Uh, there's a, uh, usually there's a dark line uh, where the plunger is uh, for you to find out what volume, what is the volume uh, of the solution in the syringe. Okay, so find initial volume minus the final volume will give you the volume of the ascorbic acid 
solution used to decolorize the DCPIP DCP solution, which I label as XML. Uh, XML. The ascorbic acid, so XML. Uh, that's my term for it. Then in the second part of the experiment, we use guava juice. And repeat the experiment. So now guava juice is drawn up in another syringe, 5 ml of guava juice. And we still prepare, we prepare another uh, uh, solution of uh, another specimen tube containing 1 ml of 1% DCPIP solution, like for the first experiment. Uh. So this is a new DCPIP solution. And repeat experiment where we uh, insert the syringe tip into the DCPIP solution and add the fruit juice drop by drop into the DCPIP solution until the blue DCPIP solution is decolorized. Okay. And again, stir with the needle. Huh? Just gently stir with the needle. Okay, we don't want to incorporate or mix the air from here into the juice. All right, because that will affect the results. Now, finally, we can see that uh, the DCPIP solution is already decolorized. So, stop the experiment and determine the volume of guava juice used to decolorize the DCPIP solution, which is your Y value. Right? So, X over Y will give you the x divided by y. Eh? Okay, x divided by y will give you the concentration of vitamin C in milligrams per ml for guava juice. Eh? Uh, then you can repeat experiment with mango juice and determine the volume of mango juice used to decolorize the DSPIP solution. Okay, so you need to pre prepare the guava juice and the mango juice. Eh? And so, as I told you before, you must cut the guava into tiny pieces first and the mango also. Eh? Let's squeeze out the juices and strain it with a sieve. Now let's look at the answer for the procedure for marks. Firstly, number one, by using a syringe, 1 ml of 1% DCPIP solution is measured and placed into a specimen tube. Okay, so here you have mentioned your CV, constant variable or fixed variable, FB. All right, 1 ml of 1% DCPIP solution. Okay, and this is fixed. Then, uh, number two, a 5 ml syringe with needle is filled with 5 ml of 0.1% ascorbic acid solution. This is a step. Ensure that there are no air bubbles trapped in it, in the needle, and in, sorry, in the syringe. Huh? So this is a precaution, all right, or else it may uh, make the reading inaccurate. Then the syringe needle tip is inserted into the specimen tube containing the DSPIP solution. The ascorbic acid is added drop by drop. Again, this is like a precaution, uh, drop by drop, to ensure that you have more accurate readings into the DSPIP solution until the blue DSPIP solution is decolorized. Right? The volume of the 0.1% ascorbic acid solution needed to decolorize the DSPIP solution is recorded. This has to do with the responding variable later on. So the guava fruit and the mango fruit are cut and their juices are squeezed out separately. The juice is strained with a sieve to remove solid particles of fruit. So this is again another precaution, right? So, but here you mentioned the, uh, here, here, number six, uh, steps one to four are repeated twice for guava juice and mango juice respectively, okay? So if you have enough time, you can repeat it twice. Now, if not, if you have time for only one uh, round, okay? Uh, try to repeat twice uh, if you can, huh? so that you have you can find the average reading for the volume of guava juice and mango juice that is needed to decolorize the DSPIP solution okay the volume of each juice needed to decolorize 1 ml of 1% DSPIP solution is recorded so this is your rv the actual rv uh, the sub rv all right then the concentration of vitamin c of each fruit juice is calculated okay now this is your main and final rv Okay, the concentration of vitamin C in the fruit juice. So sub RV is volume of fruit juice needed to decolorize 1 ml of 1% DCPIP solution. This is my uh, way of calling it, huh? stating it. Sub RV is the RV that the, the data that we obtain uh, in the, from the experiment. Huh? And then from there, when we do calculations, we come to the main or final RV, okay, which is also... Uh, mentioned in the objective or aim of the experiment. Uh, that's the concentration of, concentration of vitamin C in each fruit juice, which can be calculated by using this uh, formula X over Y milligrams per ml, uh, where X is the volume of the ascorbic acid that was used, 
and y is the volume of the fruit juice that was used to decolorize 1 ml of this PIP solution. Let's look at a sample result. Okay, so draw, draw the table first before you start your experiment so that you can fill in the final reading on the syringe easily. All right, and calculate the volume of the solution or juice used to decolorize the DCPIP solution. All right, so the in this column here, type of solution of fruit juice, right? We write down the 0.1% ascorbic acid solution, guava juice and mango juice. Then the initial reading on the syringe is 5 ml. All right, so, so try to draw up 5 ml of each of these uh, juices or the solution uh, the as ascorbic acid solution first. Huh? Then, after you have already added the solution or fruit juice into the DCPIP solution and decolorized the DCPIP solution, all right, then you have to record the final reading on the syringe, right? And the initial reading, 5 ml, minus the final reading, for example, 4.1 ml, will give you the Volume of the solution or juice used to decolorize 1 ml of 1% DCPIP solution. Okay, so in that way it's done systematically. Uh, same for guava juice and mango juice. Okay, so note the initial reading on the syringe and then note the final reading. Uh, so initial reading minus final reading will give you the volume of the solution or juice used to decolorize the DCPIP solution. Another thing is all results must be written to the same number of decimal places. For example, in, for these three results, it is to one decimal place. Right, question B1, carry out the experiment. State the observation for the guava juice. Huh? Observation. So what are the components of an observation? Please recall. Yes, it is MV sub RV plus reading plus units. Huh? And sub RV is the raw data that you obtained uh, in this experiment. So think for a moment what observation you're going to write. And first, we need to know the results here. Uh, so here is a table of results. Let's say you obtain this table of results after doing the experiment. So type of solution of fruit juice. Okay, here is the MV. Then volume of solution of fruit juice used to decolorize 1 ml of 1% DCPIP solution in milliliters, ml. Huh? Now, this is your sub-RV, okay? But there are two readings and there's an average reading, right? So, which one are you going to state in your observation? Okay, think about it for a moment. Huh? So, uh, for average reading, we actually take the two readings, add it, add the two uh, values together divided by 2, correct? 1.1 plus 0 0.9 divided by 2. That's how we get the average value, okay? After calculation. Uh, so, pause the video and try and write the observation first and then we'll see the right uh, observation, uh, how to write the observation afterwards. So, the question is what are you going to write for the reading plus units? Uh? Which values are you going to use? Right, let's look at our answers. Now, if you have two readings for the sub-RV, okay, reading 1 and reading 2, then you should state both readings in your observation. All right? And don't state the average reading, uh, the average value. Okay, because this is obtained after calculation. So it's not your raw data. All right? So for observation, use the the readings, uh, or what we call the raw readings, uh, direct from the the experiment, which you obtain from the experiment directly. Okay, now let's see whether your observation is correct. Huh? So state the observation for guava juice. So is this one. You can highlight that in your, you know, table that you have drawn up huh, earlier. And the observation is like this. For guava juice, the volume of the juice that is needed to decolorize 1 ml of 1% DCPIP solution is 0 0.4 ml for the first reading and 0 0.6 ml for the second reading. Okay, so we write down both readings in the observation. So let's see the components. Guava juice is your MV. Volume of juice that is needed to decolorize 1 ml of 1% 1 
DCIP, DCPIP solution is your RV. Take note that I write out the RV in full. Don't just write volume of juice is 0.4 ml. Now you must write in full. In full. That is needed to decolorize 1 ml of 1% DCPIP solution. Huh? And then lastly, the readings. So 0.4 ml for the first reading, okay, plus the units ml, huh? and 0.6 ml for the second reading. Okay, so reading plus units. So these three components here, your observation is complete. Okay? Right, question B2. State the inference, your inference for B1, or explain your observation in B1. They are the same type of question. Okay? They mean the same thing. Because an inference is an explanation for an observation, or the reason for that observation observation why the observation is like that okay so first of all let's discuss the components of for inference and uh, inference is quite challenging to uh, students usually they don't know how to write inference huh? so please take note now huh? the inference first thing you have to compare your reading with the other readings from other mvs huh? so compare with other observations for example compare the volume of juice guava juice needed to decolorize the dspip solution with the volume of the mango juice that is needed to decolorize the dcpip solution okay and then uh, in your answer you state whether one juice is more than the other or it has a is a larger volume than the other or smaller volume okay and then that is to start you off uh, the comparison then after that you give the reason or, by, or explanation for this observation, okay, using your biological concepts and knowledge. So you can use the words because and then add in your biological reason. Sometimes it may involve a process, sometimes it doesn't, okay? So pause the video a while and write your own inference first. Practice writing the inference and we will uh, discuss it in a short while. So always um, base it on biological concepts or knowledge, right? Your explanation must be based on that. Right, let's wait the answer. Less guava juice is needed to decolorize 1 ml of 1% DSPIP solution compared to mango juice. So we make the comparison here. Because of what? So this is because guava juice has a higher vitamin C content than mango juice okay so in that sense it is more powerful you no know? it has more vitamin c in it to decolorize the dcpip solution uh, so less of it will be needed okay so the vitamin c will then reduce the dcpip solution and decolorize it that's the biological explanation for the decolorization of dcpip solution it's because the vitamin c reduces the dcpip solution okay so add all this in, in your inference. The main part is that the guava juice has a higher vitamin C content than mango juice. That is why less guava juice is needed to decolorize the DSPIP solution compared to mango juice. Okay. Next, construct a table and record all the data collected from this experiment. Your table should have the following titles. Type of solution of fruit juice, volume of solution of fruit juice, used to decolorize 1 ml of 1% DSPIP solution, then concentration of vitamin C in milligrams per ml, right? And the formula to calculate the concentration of vitamin C is volume of 0.1% ascorbic acid solution per volume of fruit juice. Okay, in short, it is X per Y. Uh, now, this formula may be given or it may not be given. So, please memorize the formula, right? And take note that the volume of ascorbic acid solution is the upper value. Volume of fruit juice is the low value and not the reverse, which is the mistake made by many students. Okay? The volume of ascorbic acid solution should be the upper value. Huh? And it's divided by the volume of fruit juice or in short, X. Huh? So X sounds like ascorbic acid right now. Huh? X per Y. Huh? Okay. Now pause the video a while and then try and draw the table yourself. Okay? So count the number of columns uh, here that you should have. You have a type of solution of fruit juice, one column. Volume of solution of fruit juice used 
is another column. Write out the title in full when you uh, fill up your table. But this column has to be divided into three parts. Remember that uh, you have first reading, second reading, and average. Okay. And finally, is the column for concentration of vitamin C. So all the uh, titles should be written horizontally from left to right. Uh, with the type of solution of fruit juice on the left hand side. That's your MV, right? Uh, volume of solution of fruit juice used is your sub RV. Uh, uh, that's the second part, the second column. Okay, second title. And then the third one should be concentration of vitamin C on your right. Uh, title on your right. And this is your main or final RV. Okay? Right, pause the video, draw the table. And then we will discuss. So you need to draw the table yourself uh, because practice makes perfect. Don't just look at the answer and then copy the table, whole table down. Uh. So train your brain to think and then uh, draw the table yourself first. Okay, pause the video. Uh. Right, let's look at the answer. So let's see how it's marked. Now the first thing is you should have all these titles here from left to right. So titles plus units, one tick. Could be one mark huh? so type of solution of fruit juice huh? we copy from the question and the second one volume of solution of fruit juice used to decolorize one ml one percent dcpip solution write it out in full huh? remember huh, it's not just dcpip you must add the word solution just like ascorbic acid solution huh? must be written in the word solution must be written in and then it's divided into three columns below one two three huh? for the sub rv you have First reading, second reading, and then the average. Okay? And then finally, concentration of vitamin C in milligrams per ml. Right? The unit must be there. Same for this column, uh, the sub RV. Unit is ml. This one, milligrams per ml. Titles plus units complete, then one tick. Uh, I suggest when you are reading the question, you can write down the units ready uh, for the volume of solution of fruit juice used. Write it in the question itself so that when you draw the table, you won't forget to write in the units. Okay. Now the second part of our table, which is marked, is this one. Correct data. Okay, all this. Uh, the MV, the MV plus the sub RV all written down correctly. Uh. And the third one is the concentration of vitamin C. Correct calculation. So show the calculation. So this column should be a bit broader for you to write in the calculation. Uh, to write the calculation. And uh, calculations like that. Huh? Volume of ascorbic acid divided by the volume of the fruit juice. According to our equation x per y. Huh? So 1.0 divided by 0 0.5. That is the concentration of vitamin C. Equals to 2.0. For mango juice, 1.0 divided by 3.1. Huh? Equals to 0 0.3. Take note that all values here must be written to the same number of decimal places. Huh? So this is to one decimal place. If you have 2.04 here, and then here you write answer 0 0.3, that means the number of decimal places are different, then you won't get that mark for calculation. So all values must be to the same number of decimal places. Okay? So that is your three marks. Uh, you need to practice drawing more tables if you uh, are weak in drawing the tables. Uh, practice makes perfect. Let's discuss the formula to calculate the concentration of vitamin C in fruit juice. So this is also important for objective questions, right? Now, there are two different ways to calculate the concentration of vitamin C depending on the units, all right? Now, the first one, if the unit is in milligrams per ml, as we have seen just now uh, in our table of results, then the formula is Volume of ascorbic acid solution divided by the volume of the juice used to decolorize the DSPIP solution. That's all. Or X per Y, where X stands for the volume of the ascorbic acid solution and Y is the volume of the juice. All right? And it's in milligrams per ml. However, if you are asked to calculate the percentage of vitamin C, the unit is percent, then you have to uh, take this value, which is volume of ascorbic acid solution per volume of juice used, times 0.1%. Uh, the original uh, formula for here above, 
but you have to times by 0.1%. Just add extra huh? uh, this, this uh, operation here, this part here, times 0.1%. Huh? So in short, your percentage of vitamin C is equals to X per Y, that means volume of ascorbic acid solution per volume of juice times 0.1%. That's all. Okay? Uh, so that's the extra part added here times 0.1% compared to the first formula. So read the question carefully. Do they want the concentration of vitamin C in milligrams per ml or percentage? Now before you choose the right formula for it. The next science process skill is communicating through graphs. Okay, so let's look at the question. Using the data on the table, draw a bar chart of the concentration of vitamin C against the type of fruit juices. Take note, it's a bar chart. Secondly, is usually draw a graph of RV against MV. Uh, RV against MV. So your RV here is the concentration of vitamin C against the MV type of fruit juices, right? Uh, so when you draw the bar chart, RV is always on the vertical axis here. Uh, RV against MV. MV is on the horizontal axis. Okay, not the balik, uh, not the reverse. All right, because some people make, some students make a mistake with that. Now try and draw the bar chart based on the results here, the type of fruit juice and concentration of vitamin C for guava juice and mango juice. Okay? You don't need to write for the ascorbic acid. No need to draw a bar chart for ascorbic acid. Okay? Because that's not the real RV. Alright, so now pause the video and draw your graph. Okay, let's look at the answer here. So, um, for your scale here, it should be Uniform, large and few three-quarter of the graph paper. Alright, so don't draw a tiny graph as this will reduce your marks for the graph, huh? for scoring. So the smaller the graph, the less the marks. That's a hypothesis. Okay, right. Then titles, you must have, or labels, huh? you must have the RV, the title for RV, which is concentration of vitamin C. You must have the units, milligrams per ml. Huh? And then the Title for MV is type of fruit juices, no units, right? And here for each bar, we have to write what juice it is. So guava juice and mango juice, okay? So if your titles are complete with units, uh, units must be written together with the titles, then you get probably get one mark. Huh? But sometimes it's already written for you, huh? okay, in the graph on the graph paper for titles and units. Now, then looking at the bars, okay, the... The points, the points must be plot, plotted correctly from the table. Huh? So 2.0 here and 0 0.3 here, right? So notice that the scale is stretched out huh? until 2. Huh? So the maximum value for the RV should be quite above at the upper end of the graph, huh? upper part of the graph. Now, next, so if it's correctly plotted, then you get one tick here. Huh? Correct height for the bar chart or correct plotting of the points for the curve. Now, if it is a curve, then maybe you have a few points here. Huh? You draw an, an X huh, for each point, right? So, use your hand to join the points in the curve. Free hand. Huh? Steadily draw the curve. Join all the points and please do not use a ruler if it is a curve. Unless the graph is a, shows a straight line. Huh? Then you can use a ruler. If not, draw free hand. And do not extrapolate beyond the points. So after joining all the points together, you must not extrapolate, meaning, you know, elongate it and then join to other unknown points. Uh, for example, some people like to join the, the first point here to the zero mark. Okay? So for biology, we don't do that. We don't extrapolate beyond the points. Huh? So start from the lower point here and then you join all the points until the upper point. That's all. Don't go beyond the upper point. Okay? For the curve. Do not extrapolate beyond the points. And sometimes, now, histogram is not usually asked, huh? never been asked before. Histogram is used for continuous variation. For example, uh, plot a graph, plot a histogram of uh, the number of students against the height or the range of heights for students. Okay? So this hasn't come up before. Mostly it's usually it's bars or curve. Okay, the last question here is a question on classification. The box below shows some methods of preparing and consuming foods rich in vitamin C. 
classify the methods into one methods that preserve vitamin C content in foods and two methods that cause great loss of vitamin C from food right so here we have the various methods soak fruits in water before eating eat fruits raw cook food at high heat use less water in cooking stir fry the food so you are supposed to classify the methods right so usually when we classify we have to draw a table huh? and on in one on the left side you write methods that preserve vitamin C content in foods and the other side is methods that cause great loss of vitamin C from food okay so draw the table uh, pause the video draw the table and then we'll look at the answer in a short while okay let's have a look at your answer and the answer that's given huh? methods to preserve vitamin C content in food huh? and methods that cause great loss of vitamin C content from food huh? so uh, copy exactly from here the title huh? copy exactly the title for the two boxes or two two uh, methods right okay so then after that try and classify the, the methods here now let's have a look what are the methods that can preserve the vitamin C content in food okay so the first one is use eat the fruits raw first huh? eat the fruits raw so when you eat it raw you don't cook it the vitamin C content is preserved it's not destroyed by heat right and secondly use less water in cooking because uh, water can dissolve the vitamin C uh, and uh, carry it away all right take it or draw it out from the the food uh, like vegetables or fruits so use less water in cooking the vegetables right and then uh, stir fry the food quickly meaning to say we try to avoid uh, cooking at extremely high temperatures and for a long time because heat can destroy the vitamin C right now the methods that cause, cause great loss of vitamin C all right from food is soak fruits in water before eating if you soak the fruits then the vitamin C will be dissolved in the water uh, that is thrown away right so uh, cook food at high heat this will destroy the vitamin C uh, because high heat destroys vitamin C right let's look at other possible questions related to the science process skills such as operational definition and uh, some hot questions now you can be asked to state the hypothesis for this experiment okay so recall the components of a hypothesis you should have mv rv and the correct relationship okay and the rv that we are using is the main or final rv all right for the hypothesis all right so there are two formats for hypothesis as we have discussed in the earlier video one is for factors that can increase or decrease we can write as mv increases decreases rv increases or decreases or the higher lower the mv the higher lower the rv okay uh, but for this experiment it's more suitable to use the second format huh? for a few items that are compared like fruits and food samples for example of all the mvs a specific mv has the highest or lowest rv uh, specific mv1 uh, has the highest or lowest rv compared to mv2 and mv3 now this is in the case if you have three values for mv okay but in our experiment we used only two fruits uh, guava and mango fruit okay so we can change the format a bit so of the two mvs one mv uh, has the higher or the lower uh, RV compared to the other one, uh, the other MV. Okay, compared to MV2, let's say. All right, so pause the video for a moment and try to write down the hypothesis. Okay, recall your MV, then the R, main RV, and what's the correct relationship. Let's look at the, the answer. Of the two types of fruit juices, guava juice has a higher concentration of vitamin C compared to mango juice, right? So types of fruit juices is your MV. 
concentration of vitamin C is your main or final RV. Okay? And the relationship is that guava juice has the higher concentration of vitamin C. Okay? Compared to the mango juice. Okay? So, three ticks here to get your three marks. Next question is to test the science process skill of defining operationally. Based on the results of this experiment, state the operational definition for vitamin C. Three marks, right? So this is actually the experimental definition based on the results of the experiment. Okay. So recalling the, back the components of operational definition, as we have discussed in the previous video on osmosis, right? The second video on osmosis, we must have definition, the basic definition, okay, which is uh, the theoretical definition modified to practical, right, to your practical uh, or experiment here. You must state the organism, or if there's a process, you must state the process. Huh? Then the RV, um, you can put which is shown or determined by the sub RV. Huh? Use sub RV for operational definition, okay. Uh, but for hypothesis, we use the main RV. Okay, that's the proper way. So CV can be added into the def definition, the constant variable or the fixed variable. Okay, but this is optional. And MV, you must mention that the RV is affected by the main MV or by the uh, types of fruit juices. Okay, so um, remember that the RV we use uh, is the sub-RV because this is an experimental definition. Uh, so we use the RV that is, that is the data that we obtain from the the experiment through the experiment so remember your components are uh, door cam if you have a c here the cv added or if you want you can use dorem uh, like for doremon the cartoon character uh, dorem all right try and write your operational definition now pause the video okay let's look at the answer vitamin c is the ascorbic acid content the ascorbic acid content in guava juice and mango juice which is shown or determined by the volume of fruit juice needed to decolorize 1 ml of 1% dsbip solution the concentration of vitamin c is affected by the type of fruit juice okay so here uh, the first part is talking about the definition right uh, stating the definition so always begin with the term uh, vitamin c is the term you want to define so write down start with the term vitamin c is uh, so Ascorbic acid content in guava juice and mango juice. Now, definition is that vitamin C is actually ascorbic acid, right? And then, um, here we state the, the organisms, uh, guava juice and mango juice, uh, which, guava and mango, uh, which is shown or determined by, so now we have the RV, right? The volume of fruit juice needed to decolorize 1 ml of 1% DSPIP solution. Write it out in full, right? And finally, the concentration of vitamin C, that means our RV, is affected by the type of fruit juice. Here, I've broken up the definition into two parts. Uh, if you want, you can put, and its concentration, and the concentration of vitamin C is affected by the type of fruit juice. But since it's so long, I broke it up into two parts. Okay, So, affected by is mentioned, and type of fruit juice is your MV. Uh, the RV is affected by the MV, correct? So, this one must be written in the operational definition. Here I put in the CV, which is 1 ml of 1% DSPIP solution, right? Okay, so if you have these six components or five components, uh, DOREM, you should be able to get your three marks. So let's look at the last question, a hot question. Another group of students carried out the same experiment, but they left a cut guava exposed on the table for five hours before determining its vitamin C concentration. Predict the volume of Guava juice used or needed to decolorize 1 ml of 1% DCPIP solution and explain your answer, right? So prediction is 1 mark and then the explanation is 2 marks, right? So first of all, underline the, the important uh, parts of this question. Cut guava exposed on table for 5 hours and you are asked to predict what? Volume of guava juice needed to decolorize 1 ml of 1% DCPIP solution. You are not asked to predict the concentration of vitamin C. Okay, so this is another experiment that is done after the initial, exp the first experiment. Okay, and you have to compare the results with the first experiment, the results of this one with the first experiment. So what was the volume of guava juice needed to decolorize 1 ml of 1% DCPIP solution 
for the original experiment, the previous experiment. Okay, you can recall it is 0 0.5 ml. Huh? Now, so here, uh, that was the average reading, uh, 0 0.5 ml of uh, guava juice was needed to decolorize 1 ml of 1% DSPIP solution in the previous experiment. So now in this other experiment, the guava is left exposed on the table for 5 hours. Uh, it's not used immediately after it's cut. Uh, so what will happen to the volume of guava juice needed to decolorize the DSPIP solution? So you must mention whether it's more, it will be more or less than the, the original uh, volume that was used. Okay? And then explain your answer. So pause the video and try to answer the question first. Right, let's look at the answer. The volume of guava juice needed to decolorize 1 ml of 1% DCPIP DCP solution, just copy from here, from this one, will be more than 0 0.5 ml. More. Okay? Now, what's the reason? So, the oxygen in the air reacts with the vitamin C in the cut guava that was exposed to the air for 5 hours. Oxidation occurs. It means that the vitamin C uh, undergone the process of uh, oxidation, uh, went through the process of oxidation, and it is destroyed. So as a result, the concentration of vitamin C in the guava juice decreases. Okay, There's less vitamin C, so it's not as powerful as before. The juice is not as so-called powerful as before to reduce and decolorize the DCPIP solution. Thus, you will need more juice to reduce and decolorize the DCPIP solution. Okay? More juice containing more vitamin C uh, to decolorize the DCPIP solution. Right? So, two marks for this part. Now, um, that's the end of our video here. Thanks for watching. Please share, like, and subscribe. Right? And till we meet again, goodbye.